Recently, a politician passed remarks against the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Muslims have expressed their anger at the incident and demanded retribution. When the Prophet was himself insulted during his lifetime, the Quran said to him, ignore what they say and counsel them. When people used abusive language, the Prophet did not abuse them back, nor did he confront them with aggression. If someone speaks offensively to you, you can't demand that he be punished. If someone disrespects your Prophet, you can't react by violently damaging property and burning effigies of that person. If someone has hurt your religious sentiments, you can't react by raising angry slogans on the street and pelting stones at people. If we do this, we are doing something non-prophetic in the name of the Prophet. You can't demand that hate be stopped by spreading further hate. This is why the Prophet has said, God does not wipe out evil with evil. God wipes out evil with good. In Islam, abuse of the Prophet or blasphemy does not invite physical punishment, not even an apology. The Quran clearly states that prophets were sent to every town, but people ridiculed every prophet who came to them. But nowhere does the Quran prescribe punishment against such verbal attacks. This is because people have the freedom to say whatever they want to say. God has not given anyone the right to place curbs on this freedom. If someone has issued a statement against the Prophet, you too can issue a statement in response to answer the objections raised. The Quran at no place states that if someone abuses or ridicules the Prophet, you should stop him from doing so. And if he does not stop, you should demand that he be arrested or beheaded. Hazrat Aisha, Razi Allah the Prophet's wife and a towering figure, a towering intellectual figure in early Islam has said, the Prophet never took revenge on anybody for anything personal. When Prophet, he did not make angry speeches against them. Rather, he remained patient at their behavior. Why did the Prophet remain patient? Why did he forgive insults and scorn poured at him? Because the concern of the Prophet was to help people live on a higher spiritual plane. Now, if the Prophet started taking revenge and dragging people into bitter disputes, there would be no peace and no positive work. So to help people discover God and attain spiritual enlightenment, the Prophet did everything possible to prevent society from becoming a jungle of hate and violence. The Prophet therefore also countered negativity that he received with positivity. And he famously said, forgive those who wrong you and do good to those who harm you. And we must remember that the Prophet's dignity and honor cannot be questioned by someone's fiery statements on TV or on social media. Outrage against someone who has defamed the Prophet cannot protect the Prophet's dignity. The Prophet raised his dignity and honor himself during his lifetime with God's help. And that's a historical fact. Nobody's remark against the Prophet can lower his dignity now. When someone disrespected the Prophet during his lifetime, a companion urged the Prophet to invite God's curse on that person. But the Prophet instead prayed for the person who had blasphemed against him. He prayed to God for that person. Today, instead of praying to God for people who speak against the Prophet and having well-wishing for them, we demand the worst treatment for them. So it is time for us to introspect. Is the Prophet's honor and legacy protected by pouring our outrage on social media and on the streets or by following his teachings in our own life? The Prophet has taught us that there is higher dignity in rising above defamatory comments and defamatory statements. The Prophet never lowered his dignity by raising his voice and stirring up a storm 
against such defamatory and insulting remarks passed.